Welcome to our channel. Watch the video until the end. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel to support us. When we talk about new lunar exploration, we immediately think of the Artemis program with all its planned missions and all the ideas and prospects we now have. However, it was China that formally began lunar exploration in the 21st century in 2007. Indeed, the Chang'e-1 satellite reached lunar orbit, marking the first mission of the Chinese lunar program. In the 1990s and early 2000s, other missions, both American and European and others, reached lunar orbit, but these were individual satellites or trial missions or independent missions. Chang'e-1, however, was the first mission of a structured lunar exploration program organized since the end of Apollo in 1972. Now, in May 2024, almost 17 years after the start of the Chang'e program, the sixth mission will take place, and it will be the most complex, not only among those attempted by China, but effectively one of the most ambitious robotic lunar missions ever attempted. For example, it will be the first time we reach the far side of the moon to retrieve rocks to bring back to Earth. What we will see in this video is the complete description of this mission that will accompany us throughout May and June. Now we will understand why. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, and activate the notification bell so you don't miss our videos. Before we discuss Chang'e 6 in detail, let's understand a bit about its context. Where does it fit within the Chinese Lunar Exploration Program? The latter, currently divided into three parts, is known as CLEP or China Lunar Exploration Program announced in 2004. The first phase consists of the Chang'e missions, which are all robotic. These, in turn, are divided into four phases. The first took place from 2007 to 2013 and included the Chang'e 1 and 2 missions. The goal was to reach lunar orbit to map the surface and study the moon. Then the second phase, from 2013 to 2020, also included two missions, but this time to the surface. Both Chang'e 3 and Chang'e 4 brought a rover to move on the moon. Number 4 was the first successful attempt to operate a rover on the far side of the moon. In 2020, the third phase began, comprising missions number 5 and number 6. The goal was, and still is, to recover samples from the moon's surface. Mission number 5 took place in 2020, and China successfully recovered 1.7 kg of lunar rocks. Now, with mission number 6, the aim is for 2 kg and especially a much more complex and difficult area to reach. Mission number 6 also overlaps with the fourth phase, which includes missions number 6, 7, and 8 and will conclude in 2028. Once the Chang'e program is completed, which will serve China to test all the technologies for exploring the moon and mapping and studying our satellite, the first manned lunar landing will take place. This mission is scheduled between 2029 and 2030, and we have dedicated a detailed video to it, which you can find by clicking on the card here above. Then, in the decade starting from 2030, the major Chinese program for stable lunar exploration, currently called ILRS, or International Lunar Research Station, is expected to begin. It's called this because, in China's plans, it also involves other countries. Indeed, the word international positions it as a real alternative to Artemis, or at least on paper. This division into two major lunar exploration programs may seem like a real new race to the moon, and it probably will be formally since those who sign the ILRS collaboration will likely not sign the Artemis agreements and vice versa. However, on a practical side, the situation is much more nuanced. During the Chang'e 6 mission, which we will discuss today, for example, there are scientific instruments from Sweden, France, and Italy, which are countries that have signed the Artemis agreements, and then a CubeSat coming from Pakistan. Having understood the context a bit better, let's go into more detail. The launch of Chang-6 will be performed with a Long March 5th rocket, which is currently the largest and most powerful rocket available to China. It will be launched from the Wenchang spaceport, the most modern but also the southernmost available to China. This rocket is necessary because the probe, weighing 8200 kg, will be one of the heaviest payloads ever launched by China to the moon's surface. From the moment of departure to the return of the samples to Earth, 53 days will pass, and if all goes as planned, that will be precisely when the primary mission of Chang'e 6 will conclude. The entire mission, that is, does not end with the arrival on the lunar surface, as is obvious, but with the return of the samples to Earth. To carry out this entire mission, the probe is divided into four main components, a service module, a re-entry capsule, a lander, and an ascent module. 
Let's start with the service module. This will be used to transport the probe to lunar orbit, since it will be equipped with the propulsion system, solar panels, and main tanks. It will place the lander on the correct trajectory to then descend to the moon. Once the lander is released towards the surface, the service module will wait in lunar orbit. The exact dates of these operations are not yet known, but it is likely that the release of the lander will not occur as soon as it arrives in lunar orbit, but will first perform test orbits to study the landing area precisely. Once on the surface, samples will be collected via a robotic arm equipped with a drill that can reach up to two meters below the surface. These samples will then be transferred into a container in the ascent module, which will then take them back into orbit. Here, the ascent module will perform a docking with the service module, inside which is the capsule that will then bring them back to Earth. The samples will be transferred from the ascent module to the capsule, and once this operation is executed, the service module will head back to Earth. As mentioned earlier, if all goes as planned, the landing on Earth should occur 53 days after launch. If the launch remains scheduled for May 3rd, the return to Earth will therefore be expected on June 25th. The landing and sample collection site on the Moon will be the real peculiarity of Chang'e 6. Until now, indeed, only China, during the previous mission number 4, managed to operate a probe on the far side of the Moon. But it had not yet reached this far south. Chang 6 will attempt to land within a basin called South Pole Aitken, an area particularly interesting because it covers a large part of the far side of the moon. Inside it, there is another basin, among many, called Apollo, where the landing of the Chang'e 6 probe is planned, on the southern side. This area is particularly interesting because, being a lunar basin, it is theoretically at a low altitude, i.e., on a relatively thin layer of the lunar crust. Many rocks, including those deep below that are the target of Chang 6, are expected to derive directly from the lunar mantle, and are therefore of great scientific importance for studying the moon's past as well as the entire solar system. According to a scientific article published in 2023, which is currently the only official source on the landing site of Chang 6, three different areas have been identified as possible landing sites. As can also be seen from these maps, the landing area of Chang'e 6 is not exactly at the lunar south pole. Indeed, it is about 1400 km away. However, it is still the southernmost area ever reached by a robotic mission, further south than Chang'e 4, the previous mission. The great peculiarity is to be found on the far side of the moon and inside the Apollo Basin. One of the main scientific objectives will also be to understand why and to what extent Geologically speaking, of course, the visible side is so different from the far side. Speaking of scientific objectives aboard the Chang'e 6 mission, as we mentioned at the beginning, there are also four non-Chinese experiments. Two of these instruments will study how the lunar surface interacts with its tenuous atmosphere, which we commonly take for granted as non-existent, but which is actually present, albeit composed of few molecules. The first of these two instruments is the French instrument called DORN which will observe the degassing of radon from the lunar crust, while the second experiment is the Swedish one called NEELS, which will detect negative ions emitted by the lunar surface due to the solar wind. Chang'e 6 will also carry an Italian instrument called INRI, a retro-reflector that will be used to measure distances precisely from the lunar surface to orbit. This retro-reflector is the same as the one that was mounted aboard the Schiaparelli Mars lander, Finally, a CubeSat, that is a small satellite built by Pakistan, specifically by some students, will separate from Chang'e 6 in lunar orbit and take images of both the orbit and the magnetic field of the moon. Another important aspect to consider, returning to talk about the Chang'e 6 mission, is the connection with Earth. Since the mission is directed towards the far side of the moon, as we have repeated several times, it is impossible to connect directly from Earth with the probe. For this reason, China launched a satellite a few months ago called Kuekiao-2, which is already active and ready to serve as a true radio bridge with the probe. Once the Chang'e 6 mission is completed, this satellite will be repositioned to another orbit that better covers the lunar south pole, where the Chang'e 7 and Chang'e 8 missions are directed, scheduled respectively for 2026 and 2028. Additionally, this satellite will be the forerunner of an entire lunar constellation, i.e., a series of satellites that will be placed in orbit around the moon, which China plans to build starting in the second half of the next decade. This was the complete overview of the Chang-6 mission. 
One of the most ambitious and complex missions ever attempted on the moon this century. Recovering samples and doing so with robotic missions indeed requires the correct functioning of many different components, and the success not only of a lunar landing but also of a return to Earth. Doing all this on the far side of the moon where communications are very complex and the terrain is less studied is even more ambitious. Thank you for watching. Leave a comment and a like to support us.